This episode is sponsored by Cook Unity. It's no surprise to my channel that I love food and the at-home experience that comes with it. And what makes Cook Unity unique is that they've opened my mind to what an at-home dining experience can look like. Cook Unity isn't just another food delivery service, it's a chef to you platform, delivering restaurant quality meals straight to your door. Balancing flavor and nutrition in their creations, Cook Unity's chefs make it easy and enjoyable for you to eat well. Today I'm diving into some beef bibimbap by my friend Esther Choi, yes, the recent Iron Chef winner. Upgrade your dining game at cookunity.com slash babish50 or click the link below. Using my code babish50 supports this channel and also gets you an exclusive 50% off your first order. Let me back on the line or I walk. You can walk right back into the ocean for all I care. You cook another meal like that in my kitchen, it's going right where the last one did. You can keep me out of the kitchen all you like. I'll never be a waiter. Well, that's fine by me because you sure as hell are never going to be a cook in my restaurant. Have you got it? Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the true bluefin saute from the live action One Piece. First up, the tuna, which had a distinct triangular shape. So I think it was cut from the tail end of the tuna loin. Mine isn't as perfectly triangular, but we'll just pretend. First, we're gonna marinate it in a mixture of a quarter cup soy sauce, three tablespoons each sake and mirin, and one and a half tablespoons of honey. A little bit of sugar is gonna help things brown. Tiny whisk until the honey's incorporated, and then I'm gonna shave some fresh ginger in there. These long strips are gonna add ginger flavor while making them easy to remove from the tuna so they don't burn when we sear it. Place the marinade and the tuna in a zip-top bag and let marinate in the fridge for 30 to 60 minutes. Next up, Sanji appeared to be making an herb-infused oil, so I'm quickly blanching a handful of parsley, chives, and Thai basil. Blanching these guys for about 15 seconds and then plunging into an ice bath is going to help them keep their color, which in turn is going to help our oil turn nice and green. Chill them off, pat them dry, and then they're headed into a mortar and pestle. Normally, I'd just blend them together with the oil, but crushing them is probably going to give them a more subtle flavor flavor and help our olive oil from turning too bitter. So I'm adding one cup of extra virgin olive oil, a little splash at a time, thoroughly crushing the herbs into the oil and then letting them sit together for at least an hour. Then you could pass them through a cheesecloth or in Sanji's case, a number four conical coffee filter, secured to the measuring cup using some chip clips and allowed to drip until fully filtered and you end up with a nice clean herb oil. Now next he mentioned a sweet soy reduction, but he can be seen dicing onions and then it looks like there are caramelized onions underneath the tuna. So I'm gonna merge them together, slowly and gently cooking one chopped onion in a few tablespoons of olive oil over medium-low heat, occasionally squirting with water to help prevent things from browning too quickly, and to help scrape up any browning that's occurring on the bottom of the pot. Continue for about 30 minutes or until the onions are thick, sweet, and jammy. Then I'm adding two tablespoons of soy sauce, two teaspoons of honey, and two teaspoons of mirin, allowing that to reduce for one to two minutes or until thicker, sweeter, and jammier. Then real quick, we're going to blanch some asparagus. Blanching and then shocking in cold water for about two minutes is going to preserve its color and allow us to sear it at a higher heat. Next up, what looked to me like a spicy paprika tweel. First, I'm combining four ounces of water and three ounces of vegetable oil, then two tablespoons each all-purpose flour and almond meal, and one tablespoon each sweet and hot paprika sifted through a fine mesh sieve. Go ahead and full-size whisk that until you're blessed with a thin batter, which we're going to pour into a non-stick skillet set over medium-low heat in our desired shape. And this, depending on a number of factors, is going to take some adjustment. Heat, time, and batter consistency are all going to have a dramatic effect on your end product. My first attempt came out okay, but the holes were too small, which means the batter was too thick, so after removing it to a paper towel and wiping the pan clean, I adjusted the batter with a little splash of water and tried again, this time in too cold a pan, which caused this ugly thing to happen. So I got rid of it and tried again, this time in a properly preheated pan. You know it's well preheated when it almost immediately starts bubbling. This yielded a thin, beautiful, and delicate tweel. Drain on paper towels and set aside until ready to use. Now Mr. Always has his hands in his pockets, seared the tuna in a well-seasoned carbon steel skillet. As you can see, this one's seen better days, so I'm going to bolster its seasoning by hitting it with a thin layer of oil, bringing it to an aggressive smoke and wiping it clean and shiny. Let it cool and hopefully you'll have a nice shiny surface like this one, which we're going to need because we're searing sugary fish, the two harbingers of the sticks to your pan apocalypse. So making sure that we're working with good seasoning and high heat, it should lift right off the pan once a nice crust is formed. Once you got all sort of three sides seared, this fish appropriately enough is forming a scalene the triangle. We're wiping the pan clean, getting it hot, hitting it with some oil, and searing our blanched asparagus. Throw in a clove of garlic in there and seasoning with salt and pepper until lightly seared. Now, finally, the fun part, the plating. I love any excuse to use a ring mold, and we're using one to make a perfectly round disc of our sweet soy reduction caramelized onions, which look like they were sprinkled with sesame seeds. Next up, we need to slice and sort of structurally engineer our tuna on top, one slice laid horizontally and the other vertically like a fishy sundial. I'm going to hit the fish with a little bit of flaky finishing salt, and then we need to do the oil drop 
herb thing. Using a pipette to flank the fish with five drops of green herb oil. Tuck the asparagus in back so it looks like it's hiding. And then each herb oil droplet gets an edible flower, which I could not find. So instead I have these little microgreens that kind of look like clovers. And there you have it, the true bluefin saute. Made from true bluefin tuna, which is very expensive, and delicately prepared accoutrement like the spicy paprika twill, which you can see from my body language. I just realized I completely forgot. Luckily we had just enough leftover ingredients to do all this again one more time. This time with our twill, obviously. Like, how could you possibly forget that? Because like a good rug, it really ties the room together. It adds a pop of color, a fun shape, and as it turns out, an amazing flavor. A hint of heat amongst the sweetness from the onions, the bright, clean-tasting fish, and the wholly unnecessary but nutritionally appreciated asparagus. No babish version of this dish, Sanji's recipe needs no improvement, and it's a shoe in for the Clean Plate Club. But we can't all have a Sanji in our crew, so for the days when you don't feel like making a five-star meal all by yourself, you can turn to today's sponsor, Cook You. I've been really impressed by the variety of meals I've received in my Cook Unity box, and with chef quality in mind, their meals are sent fresh, not frozen, so they're ready to heat and eat when you are. Delicious meals start with the best ingredients. Cook Unity chefs use humanely raised meat and organic ingredients whenever possible, as well as fresh, seasonal products to maximize flavor and nutrition in every bite. You know the chefs you've seen on TV or in five-star kitchens? Those are the chefs that make your Cook Unity meals. Their roster of all-star chefs includes Food Network alums, James Beard Award, winners and acclaimed restaurateurs. I love to chef DeRosa's tofu and veggie stir fry in this box. First thing that ever made me enjoy tofu. Upgrade your dining game with Cook Unity and use code BABISH50 for an exclusive 50% off your first order.